reactions are reactions involving organic compounds. Organic reactions are reactions involving organic compounds. We'll stop. The common ones are as follows. The common ones are as follows. Number one, we have addition reaction. Now, I'm going to explain these reactions briefly. So when we start taking them one after the other, it's not as if we are going to take addition reaction, no. We're going to look at alkanes, because chem 1 to reach is basically about hydrocarbons, right? So we're going to look at alkanes, their reactions, alkanes, and alkynes. And you notice that many of them, or alkanes, alkanes, and alkynes, they will pick their reaction from these guys. We are All right, please go. I'm not going to define some. I'm not going to start defining. Let's take one after the other. We have some. Please put down. Addition reaction is a type of reaction in which atoms or group of atoms are added across a multiple bond. There are type of reaction in which atoms or group of atoms are added across a multiple bond. Okay. Let's stop. Addition reaction always leads to reduction of unsaturation. Addition reaction always leads to reduction of unsaturation. Reduction of unsaturation. That is what I mean. Stop. And so reaction is always possible for either an alkene or alkyne because this guy possesses multiple bonds. If, for example, I have X2, if you ask this guy, this X2 is going to split as X and X. The first one will add to this carbon, the second guy will add to this guy, and at the end of the day, you remove the bond. What was initially a double bond now becomes a single bond. That's why we said it leads to reduction in unsaturation. So this guy becomes C, C, we have X, we have X. This guy has been added across. I added one here, I added another one here. Now, if I do this here, now this is a triple bond. So, one of these will break out, we have this X, one will add here, another one will add here. If I want to remove this second and bond, I will have to add another X again. If I want to do that, it becomes plus another X2, we have this was already here. We now add this and remove the second one. So, like I said, additional reaction basically is addition of atoms or group of atoms across carbons of a double bond or carbons of a triple bond. And for every addition reaction, there must be a decrease in unsaturation. You cannot add these two guys across this guy and still maintain a double bond here. It doesn't make sense. Once you succeeded in adding this guy, you must remove one of these. Now that is addition reaction. In addition reaction, atoms or group of atoms is added across a multiple bond. Now, if I have this, plus X2. Now, this guy is X and X because you can see two atoms here. This will add across this multiple bond. You have to break out. You have to break one of these so that the X one will come here, another will come here. I've gotten the product of that reaction. You added the stuff across the bond. Please, I'm only interested in the two carbons of the double bond or the triple bond. I'm not interested. They can actually give us something else. Say very very long. My point of interest is just this. 
in addition reactions, add one thing on one side, add the other one on the other side, and remove the what? The bond. Right? Now, what if they give us a triple bond? I'm going to do the same thing. I take in one bond at a time. This guy, this guy is two atoms. Is it also? Now so come here, this becomes. And for me to add this guy, I must break one of the bonds. Right? If I must add another one, I will now break the remaining one. But you cannot break, there must be at least one bond between these two guys holding the two atoms together. Right? This is sigma bond. This guy is phi. Phi is very weak. If I add another guy here, this becomes. This was already here. This, this one is there. So when you break out this guy, you now add this. So it means that addition reaction is only possible for a double bonded compound or what? Any compound that has single bonds or two cannot undergo what? Addition reaction because you can, what are you going to add? Take note of that. Addition reaction is actually um, possible for double bonded compound. Elimination reaction is a removal of atoms or group of atoms from adjacent carbons. Removal of atoms or group of atoms from adjacent carbons to form a multiple, a multiple bond compound. To form a multiple bonded compound. To form a multiple bonded compound. Form a multiple bonded compound. Please put down, stop. Elimination is the reverse of addition reaction. Elimination is the reverse of addition reaction. Elimination is the reverse of addition reaction. Now, there are so many examples of elimination reaction. We have Dehydration of alcohol. This is the first one. And the second guy is dehydrogenation. Please don't write here. I kept this space so that I'll put the reaction here. We're not going to be talking about elimination reaction. In the one, three, two. All right, that's why I want to go more into details about this. Now look up. Dehydration means what? Removal of what? Water. Now, water is made up of water is in sewage, you know. What are the components of water? H and what? H. Now, what is alcohol? Let me give us an example. Eat and all. I have this. Now I use an acid. Now I use this acid H2SO4, right? And this temperature now. Why am I using this acid? Because this acid is more like um, a dry dehydrating agent. It removes water from any compound that is being attached. Now, for me to remove water here, right? Please look up. We want to eliminate this guy, and we said that once you say dehydration, dehydration means removal of water. What is water? H2O. You're not just going to remove water as water, you're going to remove water, the component that makes up water. OH and H. Now, it's very obvious where the OH is present in that compound. It's not so. We can see the OH, which is this guy. 
But the problem now is the hydrogen that we are going to remove. Because there is hydrogen here and it's also what? Now, in an initial reaction, you cannot remove two components from the same carbon. You cannot remove four H from this carbon and still only remove the H. It's not possible. So that is why you remove it from the adjacent carbon. What is the carbon that is adjacent to this guy is the one that is directly attached to this guy. So adjacent carbon to this guy is this one here. So if I remove OH from here, I will have to remove the other component of water from the other carbon. I cannot remove two of them from this guy. So I'll say if I remove this guy, then if I remove OH from here, here becomes H. Also. Now, now I cannot come and remove H from here. I remove it from here again because what? Now this guy has lost one bond, and this guy has also lost what? So I will now introduce the what? Double bond. I will now say plus what? H2. If I add this guy back, I'll go back to this. What do I mean? H2O is H and what? If I split this guy, add OH to this guy, add H to this guy, I go back to that guy. Alright? So in this case now, this is actually an example of the elimination reaction, the hydration reaction. Any reaction that has to do with removal of the molecule from the compound, that's the elimination reaction. You eliminate that stuff here. Okay? Now, the second example here, class, what do you understand by the word dehydrohalogenation? Anytime you see this, eh? D D means removal. Once you say D, right? It means removal. I don't think that because when they say hydro is H. Halogen is H. Now this nation is more like a process. Right? So this is it. This X, hydrogen L is um maybe by remove this guy hydrogen L I have this. The hydrohalogenation means removal of hydrogen gel. Now, the gel like this X can be Cl, can be Br, it can be what? I. So if I put this guy to the Br, this becomes H what? Br. If I put this guy to the Cl, this becomes what? HCl. All right. So let's look at this example. Now the question now is how do this guy do that? This is what he's asked to do. Now, you use what we call reagent. In this case, we use H2SO4. Why? Because this guy is a drying agent, and this guy is also a hydrating agent. Now, if you want to carry out this other guy, what you're going to use is going to be a base. So let's say CH3, CH2, let's use this guy. Alright, this is um, chloroethane or acyl chloride. I'll come here and I'll use KOH. I use KOH. This particular guy, potassium hydroxide, is mostly used to carry out elimination reaction. So once you do this, we want to remove, in this case now, the halide is CL. So once you remove the CL from this compound, now the component of HCL is H and what? CL. It's obvious the CL we are going to remove. It's not The H should be on the adjacent cap. You cannot remove CL from this carbon and still remove H from this carbon. So you remove CL from here, the H must come from the next carbon that is directly attached to this. Why must you remove it from it so that you'll be able to form a double bond? If you remove it from you must remove the H from this guy. So when you do that, it becomes, if you remove H from here, it becomes CH2. Remove the point CL from here, it becomes CH2. And you put your what? Double bond and have your what? ACL. So that is how the elimination reaction works. In case of exam, they might just give you something like this, and you are being asked which type of reaction is this. That's why I'm taking my time to explain this. Now, one last thing, then we are out of elimination reaction. The mechanism of elimination reaction. Please put down. Mechanism of elimination reaction. Elimination reaction has two mechanisms, namely, E1, mechanism, which is elimination
Now, the E1 vacancy follows a two step process. A two step process. Making this, you know, the step by step, the wrap process in which this guy started from the reactants and got to the products. Right? So the initial reaction can either follow the E1 mechanism or follow the E2 mechanism. The E1 mechanism, this E stands for elimination, this one stands for unimolecular. And the next guy, just in case they have in the exam, elimination reaction follows dash and dash mechanism. E1 mechanism and E2 mechanism. This E1 is elimination unimolecular. And this E2, please take note of your steps. E1 has two step process. And E2 will have a many step? One. It's also opposite. We have E2 mechanism. This is elimination by molecular. Now the E2 follows is a one step process, not like um, opposite of each other. E1 follows two step and E2 follows one step. Alright? So that is that about the elimination reaction, just in case they want to tip in questions from the elimination reaction. And this reaction does not really have a uh, mechanism of reaction, like one step, two step, like that. Also. Now, substitution reaction has been implied, right? It is a replacement of it's a replacement of a functional group with another functional group. You're basically replacing something. You're not removing it and you're not adding it. Right? You replace it and put something else in place of what was supposed to be there. I just want to tell you an example here. There is X attached to this R, but then on the product side, this X has been replaced with Y. This Y took the place of X. And so on, this X took the place of what? Y. So we ended up substituting those guys. That's what substitution is all about. Right? Now, I would say this reaction involves the replacement of one uh, of the functional group with another. Now we have a common example. Um, example of such reaction we have the. Let's say we have this plus NaOH. So have. CH2, CH3, OH plus, all right, NADL. So if I have this now, right, this VR has been replaced with OH, and I have this. But what is, that, what is, what is being replaced is called the living group. This guy that is coming out for a new guy to enter here. It's called a living group. Why? Why did I say this one is a living group? No. This is the main substrate. Like this is just like if you have your own house. This is your seat. You are the main owner of this place, and you are just being replaced temporarily for a particular purpose. Now, this particular reaction, every reaction has a substrate, right? A major reactant that without that guy, the reaction will not even proceed. So this guy is the substrate in this case. In the previous case where we did the elimination reaction, the hydration reaction, the substrate was alcohol. This other guy was just being added to react to the alcohol. In the case of alkymelite, that we added KOH, right? The substrate was the alkymelite. So in this case now, this is the substrate. And this guy is actually what is about to replace this guy. Now we have a reaction. This VR came out, OH replaced the VR. So if they give a reaction this way, they will not tell you the substitution reaction. They'll say, which type of reaction is this? Based on what I've explained so far, if you look at the reactants, like just try to observe the transformation that took place. In the first step, for example, like the which was addition reaction, the transformation was a case where reactant side had a double bond, is it also? Product side had no double bond. That's addition reaction. In the elimination reaction, reactant side has no double bond, product side has what? A double bond. Now look at this guy. If you're being asked the type of reaction this is. You don't have to rush, just look at the transformation. What actually took place here? What is taking place here? Oh, this guy had VR initially. 
And this guy, every other thing remains the same, but just that there was BR here, and there is now what? Okay, cheer. What could have happened here? Oh, this guy already had, actually had winning. And this guy is now what? That means something has been substituted for what? Another. Right? <laughs> All right. So this is some strong reaction, right? Now, like I said, some strong reaction can be divided into different types. We have substitution nucleophilic, and we have substitution electrophilic. Now, what is the difference between substitution nucleophilic and substitution electrophilic? Let me just explain that. We have two types of substitution reaction. We have the nucleophilic substitution and we have electrophilic. Now listen and listen very carefully. Every substitution reaction, be it electrophilic and nucleophilic, must have a living group. Must have what? <laughs> what is being removed for something else to come in? Us. Now, what determines the type of substitution we are going to have is what is coming in. If what is coming in is a nucleophile, that is, what is coming in is a minus. It's, it's something that has negative sign, right? That type of substitution becomes nucleophilic substitution. I repeat. If I repeat this guy, what is coming in here? Let's call this guy Y. If Y is a nucleophile, right? What is going to come out here? We call it the what? The living group. Right? If what is coming out here is this guy, which is constant, depend. Now, what is replacing this guy? If it is something that has minus, that substitution reaction is substitution nucleophilic. But if what is replacing this guy is having what? Loss. That substitution becomes what? Substitution electrophilic. It means that whatever is going to replace what is already in the compound determines whether it's going to be nucleophilic or what? Now, another, another um, explanation now. Remember, if minus, if a nucleophile must come in here, his work is only to replace something. Do you know so? That means what must be coming out here must also be what? If this guy is not minus, this minus cannot replace it. Because we are not doing reaction, we are only doing what? Substitution. Right? If you have a square pair and remove the particular one that was pregnant, you bring in another pair, it must also be what? Square. So if the reaction is nucleophilic substitution, it means that what you're removing must be a nucleophile, a minus. And what is going in must also be what? A minus. If something is an electrophilic substitution, it means that what is going in must be plus. Right? The name nucleophilic or electrophilic is actually coined based on what is attacking, what is going in. Right? What is coming out must correspond to what is doing what? So if what is going in is negative, Right? What is coming out of the word? Do you understand? So if I say substitution reaction is divided into two, we have substitution nucleophilic. That is the X thing. Now, this particular one here, we are going to see this one when we get to benzene ring. This particular one, we are going to treat it when we get to benzene ring. Benzene can undergo substitution reaction, but it is what? Electrophilic. So the one we are going to be talking about now is what? Electrophilic. Now, I don't want to start writing any stuff on the board. I just want to explain it so that you understand. We all agree that in every substitution reaction, something must come out for something to replace it. Also. Please, this nucleophilic or electrophilic, the name is actually dependent on what is going in. Right? If a nucleophile nucleo means something that is negative, right? I thought of that. Nucleophile is always having minus. An electrophile is always having what? Plus. Yes. If a minus species is replacing something, what is coming out must also be what? Minus. Because you cannot replace me and you're not having the same properties as I am. Right? Must have the same property. If plus is going in, what is coming out must also have what? Plus. Because you know why? If this guy, for example, is, he has something like this, and we are rose off, 
as we are minus. This guy will be like what? Plus. If I break this one, look up. Don't break. So if you break this one, Robin is taking the what? Minus and Tau is taking the what? What is Now look up. If I want to substitute this guy, if I want to replace the R, anything I'm bringing in to replace the R must have what? Right? If it doesn't have negative, it cannot work. Because how will I bring positive and come and put here? Where are these guys already want? Would they want? So if I bring voltage, that is why in this reaction, if I have CH3, CH2, BR, plus OH, I will now have CH3, CH2, OH, plus what? That is it. This guy is coming out as BR minus, and this guy is ending as OH1 minus H2. So we are going to be focusing on the globulin substitution. Why? Because we call it globulin because what is replacing what is coming out is a new global. Right? In an electrophilic substitution, what is replacing what is coming out is the what? Substitution. Let's put out. Substitution of the globulin reaction. Substitution of the reaction. It's a type of substitution reaction in which a nucleophile, a type of substitution reaction in which a nucleophile replaces a living group from a molecule. A type of substitution reaction in which a nucleophile replaces a living group in a molecule. Substitution nucleophilic react reaction has two mechanisms. Substitution nucleophilic reaction has two mechanisms. Substitution nucleophilic reaction has two mechanisms. The first one is SN1, which I'll use this. So I can find it. This is substitution nucleophilic. You need you The S stands for substitution. The A stands for nucleophilic, the 1 stands for unimolecular. It is a two-step process. It is a two-step process. Number 2, we have SN2. Substitution. Nucleic. By molecular. Now we have these two. Now these are the two mechanisms involved in X reaction, right? 